All right, today I'm with Liesl Teversham. I'm excited to be talking with her today because she and I are gonna be teaching a class together. Well, she's teaching the class and I'm facilitating the chat, et cetera. Um, first of all, Liesl, just wanna say hi to you. Thank you for being here. Thanks, George. It's so, so lovely to be with you. Yeah, so um, we're, you know, you're gonna be teaching a three session class on how to use EFT to bring us calm confidence so that we can show up and be visible in our marketing and our business so that we can actually make the impact and, and the income that uh, we know we can, but we aren't showing up you know, consistently, or maybe we're really scared about thinking, okay, if I show up a lot, you know, then am I going to be able to handle all the attention that I'm getting? And you know, a lot of the emotional stuff comes up. So you're teaching a three session course on this. We're going to have a lot of fun in there. We're going to be using the exercises, in the course, uh, you'll be teaching us how to do all that. I just wanted to give the audience a quick sense of your presence, number one, and then I had a, a bunch of questions to ask you. So I'm gonna just get, dive into it, and then as you share a little bit, I'll have more questions for you. So the first thing I wanted you to share with your audience is your own experience. Um, you have emailed me a couple times over the past few months about your own experience of, and just to everyone knows, Liesl is in my Master Heart business uh, program. So she herself is continuing to grow her business, which of course brings up visibility fears because she herself is an introvert sensitive, like a lot of you watching this. So Liesl, share with us maybe one or two examples of your own kind of experiencing of <laughs> visibility fears and how you overcame that. Mm, thanks, George. It's such a present thing for me still. And one of the examples I can think about that's sort of recent is in December last year, suddenly out of the blue, more people signed up for my course than usually. And it was a bit of a of course, I'm glad. And then there's a part of me that goes, Oh, I don't know if I can handle that many people on a call altogether. It's just so many eyes on me and, you know, all the fears that I help people with come up for me too. So suddenly when there's more visibility, it sort of just brings up the next layer for us. So that's one of the ways I started thinking about it. It's like, okay, I've been able to do people, you know, three or four people. So you know, whatever the next layer is just here for me to work through. And so I've got EFT to work through that. And another example is, you know, you asking me to, to present this course with you, just bring, bring up, bring, brought up all the things that I have overcome in a different layer. And it came up again for me just the minute you asked me to do this course. So it's all there for me, very present. I am not talking from a high and mighty pedestal. I'm talking from, I still experience this and I'm able to overcome it so I can go to the next level. And that's what I so, so want to help people with as possible. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I have asked many people over the years to present to my audience and I don't know, probably I would say a fifth of them decline or postpone or et cetera. And I, I kind of know just by knowing them that, oh, they're probably, that's bumping up against their visibility fears. So, so it really does hold, I think, a lot of people back from being able to show up more. So thank you for teaching this course. So, okay, let me, let's get into sort of a little bit of the content. So, you know, as somebody who <laughs> is a marketing coach, I like to tell people, you know, I, like, I, I wish for people, oh, you know, don't worry about the fear. You could just show up. You're gonna get used to it, blah, blah, blah. But it's not, it, 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 for, for those of us who are sensitive, sensitive introverts or just people who are shy, let's just say, a lot of you watching this don't even know you're an introvert. Like maybe you didn't, you never took the test, you know, to find out what your personality type is. Maybe you did. Some of you don't even know you're sensitive. You probably do. But, but you know, one of the people who commented when we shared about this class coming up was she said, wait a second, I didn't even realize I was introverted until recently. So maybe a lot of people don't know this. Okay. So if you know that you're shy about showing up and you know that it's not just a matter of someone telling you, oh, just don't be afraid, you know, just do it anyway. But you know that it's still blocked. You're still blocked. And why is that, Lisa? Maybe tell us a bit about why we can't just cognitively switch to being not afraid anymore. 
Yeah, that, that's such a great point. And I think it's so important for us to understand that because just knowing it already released some of the pressure. There's nothing wrong with you if you can't just choose to get over it. It's because the part of the brain where we make decisions and when we make goals and rationalize things is the prefrontal cortex. It sits over here. But the part of the brain that is the fear part, the limbic brain, that says to us, no, 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 it's unsafe. It's, you know, you could, something terrible is going to happen. People are going to judge you. They're going to reject you. They're going to criticize you. That part of the brain is in the limbic brain, right in the middle of the brain. It's not, the two parts don't talk directly to each other. So talking to the limbic brain that says it's unsafe with words by saying to it, you'll be fine, relax, nothing bad's going to happen. It just has zero effect that much, that much. So it is just not a question of just trying to tell ourselves to just calm down. It does not work and we all know it. And we try, <laughs> but we know it doesn't work. So we're going to talk on this course about some brain science. Like what is it that happens? And just help us to understand that there's nothing wrong with you, that you can't tell yourself to just get over something. It is a part of the brain that needs soothing with a different way than just the words calm down. And what are some of the fears that do come up? And I probably should have asked that first, but like, you know, people kind of generally know, yeah, marketing can be scary because I'm showing up to a lot of people and increasingly more people <laughs> because that's how marketing works. If it works well is increasingly more people will be looking at you and will be so. So maybe um, as someone who knows this kind of experience well and has a lot of clients who know this well, maybe just share some of the some of the blocks, some of the things that that need to be cleared. Yes, yes. Thank you, George. It's it, <laughs> some of the ones that I've mentioned today before is like, I'm not going to be good enough or my work's not going to be good enough. Somebody's going to criticize or judge me or rejection, fear of rejection. Like I'm going to put something out there. Nobody's going to want it. That does happen in marketing, right? We put something out there and there's silence. <laughs> That's an awful feeling if we haven't dealt with it. Then for introverts specifically, some of them feel like I'm such a private person. I don't want to splash everything about my my life out there. So that stands in the way of sharing about our work because we feel too private. Or if I'm too visible, I'll get all this attention and I'll need to show up more. I'll lose all my, my valuable quiet time. I wouldn't know how to manage that. Some introverts, because they are sensitive people, because they're very caring people, they take on more than they reasonably could. So there they are with already too much on their plate thinking if I'm more visible, I'm just not going to be able to handle it all. So we, we kind of have the break on at the same time as wanting to move forward. Then there's other things like people will be rude or argumentative. They'll post something awful on my post and I don't know what to do that. I hate conflict. So avoiding that is best if I just don't show up, right? I'll feel exposed or vulnerable because I'm putting myself out there. So it feels like I'm there for people to criticize, not my work. So it all feels very vulnerable. And perfectionism is a big one that comes up. I want to do it perfectly. We don't even know which, who's perfect, you know. So we don't investigate those thoughts. It's just I want it to be perfect, but not thinking about it. And then we compare ourselves to other people who find it easy, like extroverts who like, yeah, man, just share, you know, easy, big leaps. And for us, it's different. So there's so much behind this. It's such yeah. a fascinating yeah. topic. It's really. true. And what you just said about big leaps is one of the common messages among marketing teachers who are, you know, teaching us how to oh, take massive action, right? like <laughs> massive not... action. How about baby steps here? Right. So, yes. okay. You, this is great. I mean, uh, you, you, obviously know it so well because you're able to rattle off those those emotional um, challenges that that a lot of us have so how do how does EFT help with that um, well a couple of two two quick questions one I think a lot of people here have heard of EFT but maybe just explain what you understand EFT to be a little bit and then how do you teach EFT maybe differently than what they could learn elsewhere because I have learned the EFT from different people over the years. I really like the way that you do it. And so anyway, go ahead. What is EFT from your perspective and then how do you teach it maybe your, your way? 
Thanks, George. So EFT is short for emotional freedom techniques. It's with an S at the end. Sometimes people forget the S. Huh? And it's it's a way that we can send calming signals to the amygdala, that part of your limbic brain that looks out for threat. It sends calming signals to the amygdala while we think about our problem. So that's why we have to talk to the negative or how we how bad we feel about something while we do the tapping because the tapping motion calms that part of the brain so that we can think clearly and then get into action so that's what eft really does and there's also a connection with ancient chinese medicine i guess in the way of the eft tapping is using acupressure points is yes. that right that's exactly right, George. So I've, I've come to be able to explain it in the Western way and the Eastern way because some people don't resonate with either. So there's two ways to explain this. The other one is it is based on the Chinese acupuncture system from 5,000 years. Yeah. So it's a, it's a well-researched, you know, wonderful way to help us to um, balance the energy system where it's unbalanced. And so when we balance the energy system, we can function better in the world and we're more healthy and, and well balanced. Yeah. I, I, the way I think about it is, well, I don't know if this is right. You can correct me. Like acupuncture, everyone knows there's, it's like you said, 5,000 years. Um, people, especially in, of course, China and East Asia use it for all kinds of stuff. I mean, for pain management, for, you know, um, you know, you know, uh, skin issues. I mean, for internal issues, everything, they, they use it for all kinds of stuff. And then acupressure, right. Is, instead of using needles, they use touch on those meridian points to create a subtle effect also on the system. It does create an effect. And the acupressure is also well known. And so EFT is kind of like combining acupressure with sort of more um, affirmational uh, technology, you might say. So it's kind of like combining both the mind and the body and the heart into, anyway, I just think it's yes. cool. So um, how do you teach EFT differently from others or maybe what others have said that you, you do it differently or yeah. Right. Thanks, George. So um, I learned, yeah, I, I did a lot of EFT, you know, through Gary Craig videos, the originator of EFT and he's a fantastic, marvelous man. And I've got lots of EFT certifications. Now he's more of an extrovert. So I found when I was watching him, he's very fast. Uh, extroverts tend to act faster. And so his tapping is so fast that it felt to me like I just can't actually get into my feeling. It's so fast. And so what I find with my introvert and sensitive clients is we need to go a little bit slower for it to really, really sit in our nervous system. Our nervous systems work in very deep ways, very thorough, deep ways as we think and experience through things. So my way of EFT is just slow it down a little bit, give a person a real good chance to really feel into and think into the feeling that they're having when they think about this problem. And um, also what I bring in a lot of is compassion, empathy, kindness, validating the feelings that we're having. So I don't see EFT in the first place as something that we use to get rid of something. There's a kind of an unkindness there. If we want to push something away or get rid of it or shove it out, you know, that's sort of a bit violent almost and very controlling. So my way of EFT is let's acknowledge and validate exactly what we're feeling right now. We tell the truth and we just be with it for a while and it's the tapping that does the work to calm that nervous system down. So just, I think the way that sensitives and introverts need to experience EFT is that way. Not tap, tap, tap very quickly, let's get rid of it. Doesn't seem to work. I, I tapped with, a, with an extrovert coach for a little while and I just felt so frustrated because she didn't leave me enough time to think about each thing that I was saying. So I think that's the special source I'm bringing, just lots of kindness, compassion for where every person is not making anything wrong, validating where they are and not making it a violent process, making it a very allowing, kind process and the tapping does the calming down. It's not the words that we use, but we have to slow it down enough. No, oh, that's beautiful. I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to having everybody experience that with you. Yeah. Every time I've been in some kind of session with you, it's always been a wonderful experience of kind of changing my nervous system so that I can be more, well, calmly confident 
going forward. So I think just the experience of your presence in the course mm-hmm. itself, of course, along with the exercises that we're going to be doing, um, plenty of exercises. In fact, maybe we'll, we'll just finish this little interview with saying what the course is going to be like. So you mentioned that we're going to talk a little bit about sort of the theoretical foundation for why this works and the theoretical foundation helps us to visualize and understand, oh, okay, that's the part of the brain that's, that we're actually working with. Okay. Mm -hmm. And of course there's more than just a brain. I'm sure there's an entire body system that's being influenced. Um, But we're also going to do a lot of exercises. You're going to lead us through the step-by-step process of how you, you know, how you do the EFT for visibility for calm confidence and related things. Um, Anyway, I'll just let you share a bit about what you're excited about in the course. Yeah, exactly, George. So I think it's, it helps already so much when people start understanding it's nothing that I'm doing wrong. I, I don't have to blame or shame or criticize myself for not getting over this yet. There's such good reason. So we are going to spend quite a bit of time on that, helping people to understand what is going on and why it's not so simple to just rush past it or push yourself past it. And then lots and lots of EFT. I, can, I'm, I'm, I don't want to spend the bulk of the time actually talking about EFT. I want us to do it because doing it is, is what's going to help us to change we can talk about it all we want we've done it all our lives and the talking about it doesn't still make any change to it so we're going to do lots of EFT I'm hoping to have a few brave people who might be willing to unmute and tap with me and everybody will get the benefit because I teach a way called yeah and I, I just want to say that that would be optional for those of you who, yes. <laughs> who would be too shy but there are there are okay. going to be people attending from our master heart program who you know know Lisa well and are working on their own visibility, so who might be willing to? But yes, it's, it's going to be great. You're going to be sharing with us. In the, the the willing volunteers will also be kind of giving us examples. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's the thing is nobody will be forced. I please, please don't think you 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 you're not going to show up because I'm going to put you on the spot. I am pedantic about safety because this is my subject, and so nobody will ever be put on the spot. It's for those who feel brave enough. And if there's nobody, absolutely fine. I can still work that way I'll because be I do that all the time. <laughs> Thanks, George. Yeah. <laughs> right, and and we can we're going to work a lot through the chat, so nobody will feel like they have to share verbally. And it, it's it, I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be enlightening. It's going to be a sense of community because we want to know that I'm not the only one feeling this way. That's very important. So Yeah. And speaking of the community, I'm going to create a course directory, as I always like to do, for this course so that um, fellow, well, intro, uh, shy people, introverted, sensitives, or just people who want to practice this stuff to be um, on a more consistent basis can find each other. Um, create accountability partnerships, perhaps, or just to get together and practice together so that, you know, this can become integrated into their, in, in, into their life. So I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you so much for doing this. And um, for those of you interested, there's a link somewhere in the notes of the video above or below, wherever you're watching this, there's a link for you to join us, sign up. So I hope you will consider it and we will see you there. Thanks, Liesl. Thanks, George.